right, nutrition. How important is nutrition? How important is food? We'll go to the, it's pretty important, isn't it? Uh, we, we, we looked at air. How important is air? Uh, oxygen or air. We would die without it, and we would die without food. That's what would happen. Now, you're going to see in this next slide, you're going to see something familiar. What's that? That's the same soil. Isn't that interesting? Um, without food, you will have that soil again, even with aeration. So there is a process to salvation. And part of that, we must start at the breaking up of the ground. But then there's a continual feeding of that ground. And all these are found in, you might know where we're going with this, but uh, hang with me. It's, uh, we see that this nutrition for, the actu- for, for life itself, we must be fed. And, uh, but if there is no nutritional value in the soil or no life, this is what you get again. So how do we maintain, how, as we looked at breaking up the ground and, and, and the layering, how do we maintain that and how do we actually feed that? It's a machine, it's an organism, it's uh, similar. I always think of a beehive, I keep bees, it's a blessing. And um, this, the bees are a, a living organism, right? It, they, are, they all work together, there's the queen, the workers and the drones. If you didn't have one of them, there would be none, right? This is irreducible complexity. This found in the fossil record. So um, together, complete. If you don't have nutrition in your soil, your soil is dead. So there's nothing for the organism to feed on, so we're, or the plants. So let, let's move forward. Uh, you can open, your, open the Bible. We're going to go to Genesis. We're going to see how important this, this food is. Now, we know food and um, bread are synonymous, right, uh, in, in Scripture. But let's look at Genesis 47. If you have your Bibles, please open. I, we do have it on the screen, but it's always good to open the Word of God. Hello. <laughs> Okay, Genesis 47, 19. Wherefore shall we die before thine eyes, both we and our land? Buy us and our land for bread, and we and our land will be servants unto Pharaoh, and give us seed that we may live and not die, that the land be desolate. Now, there's a lot in there, isn't there? Um, in fact, I mean, look at how much death there is there, you know? I mean, these people are willing to sell themselves for what? For food. Sell themselves for food. And um, remember I said in the first, we need to keep our pulse, uh, or, uh, keep our finger on the pulse of current events, don't we? These are signs of the times. And friends, uh, They've been saying for a while there's going to be a shortage of food, right? And uh, the Bible, Matthew 24, right? Pestilence. Have we had pestilence? Right? Famines. There's going to be famines. So uh, here in the United States, we don't necessarily, haven't, we've been so blessed. The Lord is blessed. But it is, it is sure to come. So we see that these people were willing to, that without food, what? No food equals death. It equals death. That's pretty serious, isn't it? Um, Okay, Exodus, this is along the same lines. Exodus 16, 3. And the children of Israel said unto unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full. For ye have brought us forth unto this wilderness to kill us, or kill this whole assembly with hunger. We see it again. Isn't it sad? This is a sad situation, isn't it? You see that the the God delivered them out of the hand of Pharaoh, right? But here they were. This was murmuring and complaining, and they said, "God brought us to kill us. We would have rather 
stayed. And uh, it's, it's sad when you think about that. Um, but there again, you see that lack of bread, right? Actually, lack of food makes you th think some strange thoughts, right? You know, one day, it might come to the point that we might have the lack of food and we might blame God for it. So it's time for us to wake up. It's time for us to move forward. And let's not have this attitude of murmuring and complaining. God does not want it. He's merciful. He's a loving God. Um, but we need to move forward in faith. That's what was missing here. And, um, but this, this idea of bread, the lack of bread equals death, is very important to understand. This is Mark 8, 16. And 17. And they reason among themselves, this is an interesting one, saying, It is because we have no bread. And when Jesus knew it, he saith unto him, Why reason ye because ye have no bread? Perceive ye not? Neither understand? Have ye your heart yet hardened? Now, what did we learn in our first presentation? Hard soil equaled, equaled what? Hard heart. Hard heart. Do, you, do you see it here? Mm -hmm. Now, who's, who's Jesus talking to? The disciples. And he says, do you not understand? Right? And really, he's speaking of himself, right? Jesus is the bread of life. We'll get to that. Why do they not understand that I'm right before them? Why do they not see this? Their bread will be sure. Right? Um, this is the attitude. We need to have the attitude of Christ and, and know that he is the answer. So this is a sad situation as well. Um, I think just before this, you see that um, it's a feeding of the 5,000, and, and um, it's just, oh, sorry. Um, so the, what I like to bring out in this, in this uh, text here is that Christ is, is, is speaking to them very directly, and he's saying, your bread is right before you. Why aren't you feeding on it? Right? Now, it also shows that Christ is the great provider, right? He's the provider. He, he, he just fed a multitude, right? And I think a little bit later there, he says, he says, how many baskets did you get? Were you not fed? They were full. The baskets were fed after he fed. <laughs> it, it's endless. It's beautiful. Christ is so willing to give. And so what I'd like to, we're going to move into a more practical. There's a Bible study on that, but we're going to move into more practical. I want, what I want you to take away from this, text, and I believe God wants us to take it, is that Christ will provide, and he has provided. The question is, do we see it? And do we desire it? Okay. Um, these are the things. Look at this. The bread of heaven. Look at, he's given us these things on your land. How many, how many of you have a piece of property or have just property or a place, a home? Uh, did we not see these things? Did God give us these things? Look at that grass. It's beautiful, isn't it? He gave the, he gave the land a covering of grass. You know, green is one of the most soothing colors. It's not a coincidence that God clothed the, the earth with green grass, right? Leaves are such a blessing. Now, we know that this is a, a um, sign of sin as well, right? But the, the, it, it's sad to see the leaves fall, but um, there's a blessing. There's a blessing. Um, leaves are extremely, it's a carbon, but it's, they're extremely um, beneficial and fungal development, fungal life. So that carbon, the, the, it just thrives. And that's why our, our forests are fungally dominated um, soils because this happens over and over, over again. And I was mentioning to some that God, uh, God operates on um, addition and multiplication, right? These are, these are concepts that we need to think about in the garden. Um, where in the forest does uh, subtraction and division also happens, but only for the benefit 
What does God want to separate you from? Sin. Sin. He wants to separate us from sin. Multiplication, he's willing to give us the fruits of the Spirit, right? It's just more and more and more, and it's compounding. And then what? To the point where we're overflowing, right? We're overflowing, pressed down, and we're, you know, it's overflowing. So God layers these, this for us, and he's just compounding, compounding. He keeps feeding and feeding. So these are two very, very good ways at a very fundamental level to source materials on your land. And I, I, I said your land, but we need to move into the, the realm of it's God's land. It is not mine. He blessed us with it, but it's his. And we, will, we, we our family has dedicated the land to the Lord's service. And um, uh, it's been a blessing. It's been a real blessing. Okay, here's, uh, here's a, uh, uh, we're gonna go a little bit further into the spiritual line. It says, and she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Right? Then Jesus, I love this section of scripture. But then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from, from that very hour. Now, this, her daughter was vexed with the devil. Um, did the disciples see this? I mean, in the, in the text previous to this, did they have that kind of faith? They didn't have that kind of faith. Do we need that kind of faith? This woman, uh, she was a Canaanite woman. She was a dog, Right? It's a terrible thing. Hopefully none of us think of anybody. Jesus says, bring them in, you know? And, uh, but it's a good example that th- those, those scales need to be taken off and we need to see Christ for who he is, right? This woman saw Christ for who he was and she was blessed. When we see Christ in the garden for who he is, a merciful and loving God that is willing to pour out blessings and and multiply them. What what else can we say then? I love you, Lord. You are merciful and you are you are gracious. And so this this woman expressed this and I I really enjoy the woman at the well is another one we'll get in that this later on for uh, a water. But um, these parts in scripture where Jesus is really drawing people to him. Every time he speaks, he does. But he's, he, he, you know, he's drawing this woman to a better understanding of who he is. This is the gardening experience that we need. We really do need it. It's missing. Gardening for most people is what can I get? It needs to change. It needs to change. We need to be a more about God's business, right? What can I do with what God has blessed me with? And it changes the paradigm. It really does. We are no longer in this track of selfishness and these things. It starts, the, the momentum starts to gain and, and the work is gonna be finished. So, okay, John 6, 31 and 35. Our father did eat manna in the desert. Okay, this is, it. as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Praise the Lord. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Now that one also could apply tomorrow, but, or this, the next one. But do you see that God has the provisions? This is, this has a, it's a wonderful thing because um, uh, can you save yourself? No, we can't. Um, God has the provisions to save he set up this wonderful plan. It's the redemption plan. It's a beautiful plan. It's found all through scripture. You can't go anywhere without finding the redemption plan. 
So, but did you know you can find the redemption plan in the garden? It's unbelievable. That soil that is stony and rocky and ugly and you might, you never want to have that in your garden, that soil is redeemed. It's a, it's a beautiful picture of Christ and his righteousness, right? And guess what it will bear? It will bear much fruit, much fruit. And, um, uh, you know, um, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. And, and it will bear much fruit in the saving of souls. It, it, it's a wonderful, as we mentioned before, the entering wedge. All these are part of the entering wedge, and we need to understand them, especially along the agricultural lines. So... Uh, beautiful part of scripture. All right, now we're gonna move into actually tooling. Do you under, Jesus is the bread of life. We can do nothing without him. He is our sustenance. He gives us our actual breath. You know, there is nothing without him. We have nothing. But he's willing to impart righteousness, you know, and we can actually have Christ in us, the hope of glory. What a wonderful thought. What a wonderful um, goal. Um, but um, we're gonna go into the practical application of these things. Now we need to know, uh, if we really believe that God has on our land, right, or on your neighbors, or he just has it. He, he, does God not have the cattle on a thousand hills? He has the means. Uh, we might be financially strapped. We not, might not have that country home, right? Does God have the means, right? I don't believe that woman would have questioned whether God, the Canaanite woman, whether God had the means to say, be able to save her. So we, our faith needs to grow. We need to be built, and we need to be built in Christ Jesus. So we're gonna, we're gonna look now, um, now this, do you, you guys, are you guys getting the spiritual depth of that? You know, it's just so powerful. Now remember, um, I was mentioning to somebody else, go and finish this study. When you go home, um, the eight laws of health, ask the Lord to reveal, if you are convicted to agriculture and you need to move forward in agriculture, um, because it's a benefit. You can, you can experience God there, right? We, we want to be in the presence of the Most High God. We can experience God there. That's why the spiritual application is so important because if we go into the garden with, with a different attitude of what a drudgery, ugh, right? Or, man, I can't wait to just kill it at the market. I don't, sorry. But, uh, you know, financial gain at the market, you know, these, th that's a benefit. It's, it's not the goal, right? It's a benefit. God is willing to bless. But um, I, that's very important. But we're going to move into the practical now of how to, how to get the uh, access. God has it, but how do we access it? And then how do we utilize it? That's, that's we're going to, now we're going into the practical application of what we just learned. This is called a trommel. We actually got this off of Craigslist. Um, Craigslist is kind of more challenging now because it's, it's not the best place to go. There's lots of other, thing, other places, but keep an eye out. You know, um, this was a blessing. This is a trommel, they call it. And this was from a worm casting business that went belly up. And uh, it, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good piece of equipment, but you don't need that. There's a screen, and I think we showed, I'll show it to you when we go out. I showed it in the previous one. You can just make a screen really easy. I think, Devin, we said 20 minutes or 25 minutes, we made that one. And your wheelbarrow's full, right? You just screen, move the soil around, get your hands in the soil, it's fun. And uh, um, you, can, you can screen material really well. So, but this one, uh, what, this is how we screen our wood chip. And you can screen chicken manure in here and you can screen all kinds of stuff, and you can get down to those fines and then do your layering. Then th that's how, uh, just an example. Now this is a tool, remember we talked about tilling, and this is a tiller, but it's attached to a shredder. Now this, as far as all the tooling, right, this one is very important. And I think I mentioned the tomahawk shredder. This is a, a small one, it's by Troy Built too. And um, this would be a good investment for, a, for somebody that's in, moving into the country. 
Um, this helps supercharge the composting process. So everything goes down there. You break it into smaller pieces, and the composting goes that much quicker. So your leaf mulch, if you think about leaf, leaf debris, collect your leaves. Now that might be raking, that may, might be mowing, or that might be vacuuming. They do have vacuums for it. <laughs> but it, it might be raking and putting a pile. But those leaves are layer, 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 layer. Now the, the fungus have to drive through those layers. It's harder, if, if I was to show you, like say this is the leaf, is it harder to go like this or to go like this? Move horizontally or move vertically? It's much more difficult to move vertically through a, a carbon, right? A, anything. So they travel between the layers of the leaves. They will break that down. But if you shred it, they are everywhere. They are everywhere. And that's why it goes that much faster. And then you can inoculate it, which we're going to do a compost tea. But you inoculate it with the compost tea, and then you just, it's, it's like a rocket. So this helps with that. If, you don't, if you're not able to do that, it's OK. Just pile it and uh, inoculate it, OK? So, um, and they have this without the tiller. That's why the tomahawk one is good, because it's, it's just a shredder. It's not the tiller. So um, now here's another one. This is really interesting, because guess what? You don't need that shredder. It's a good way to supercharge. It's a good way to go faster. It's a good way to do more. But guess what these are? These are a shredder. Chickens will shred material. like, And it's so fun to watch, right? Hey, how many of you have chickens? I think I asked that already. So, but they are shredding machines. Now, they're not so much. There's certain, certain varieties. Uh, is that what it, it yeah, uh, Certain varieties of chickens that do not work as hard as others. You have like meat birds and these kinds of things that are used to. So I would recommend getting a bird or a, or a, a variety um, of chicken that is really, um, they're much more thin. Um, they, you know, they're in the forest of like Thailand and stuff. That's where their gen genetic pool came from. So um, they, they till more. They will use their claws much more than just a meat bird that was raised for just meat or even one that's just raised for eggs. So I would recommend that. Now, those are benefits. And we definitely don't eat meat. We don't eat eggs either. But um, we do use their eggs. We use their eggs for the calcium. So, and I think I mentioned that to somebody out there. We did a banana peel and eggshell or fertilizer for our, our tomatoes this year. So that's calcium and potassium. And that's just waste. So the, the eggs um, are a waste product for us, but um, they're not, <laughs> the shells. So if, if you can get chickens, it's a, it's a benefit. But animal husbandry is a serious thing. But we do have counsel that gardening and animal husbandry have benefits for child development, character development. Right, mercy? Mm -hmm. Right? Um, compassion and even training. You know, our children, it's pretty crazy what happens at our house. If you came and saw the chickens riding around on the bikes with the children, <laughs> you, you would say, this is kind of crazy. <laughs> but... They do. They, they love the chickens. And the chickens, it's amazing that, that God has created this bond between na man and nature. This is what was intended in the garden. We were really supposed to, to care for God's creation, truly care for them. And, you know, it is sad because you have loss. You do. This is a <laughs> sinful world and chickens do die. It's sad. But this is something as well that needs to, it does need to be, addressed, right? A child does need to understand that God is still a merciful God and loving even though the animal died. You know, this is a world of sin. He wants this no more, you know? So um, there's benefits in this other than just I want something from them, right? It, it's, God has a, a real good blessing from this. So now this is really important. I don't know how many, how many of you compost? Okay. Um, composting is really important. It's a real good tool some people don't like it because it's dirty and smelly. I can understand that. 
but it is really good, um, a really good source, especially if you mix it with vermiculture. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that in a, in a second. But this is organic matter, and this is mineral dense organic matter, and if this comes from your garden, it's that much more dense. If it comes from the store, you might have some pesticide and chemical residue. It's good for us to get away from that. I know that it's difficult. Organic, buying organic is very difficult. But try and buy organic, try and get composting going, and try and get away from herbicides, pesticides, and fungicides, which are on all of our food. They're even in residues uh, in the soils very, very heavily. Praise the Lord, there's a solution. We'll get into that just in a second. So um, composting is really important, um, and it's a very easy step to building food, right? To building soil, nutrient-dense soil. So I hope some of, some of you or those that are thinking about agriculture would start thinking about saving your risk. Now, if you pair this with chickens, and, and those that you know chickens, um, they'll devour this. It will be gone, right? They, they will eat everything, and they will till it. Even that, I think there's asparagus in there, gone. It, 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 it will all be gone. Uh, our chickens will eat like a whole banana peel. Gone. It, they, are, they are amazing. <laughs> so, uh, but, um, so here they are. This is, this is also a way. This is, this, these are red wigglers or some, some species of... Uh, now, this type of worm stays on that top soil strata, you know, that strata uh, that's right at the top. It would be more like in the compost and kind of the soil, just right down below the soil, because they're processing the debris that falls, right? And they, they are processing that. Now, there are uh, night crawlers and these larger worms, like I told you in, in Australia, there's worms this long and this big, and they drive way deep. And they are a wonderful way of tillage, but also getting water and nutrients down into the, into the soil structure, all the way through that column, right? That's what you want. You want aerated, and you want food, and you want your plants, no matter where they are, you want them to feed, right? No matter where they go. So worms are a wonderful thing. If you can do vermiculture, it's a really good thing. They have... Uh, worm bins, I don't know how many people know about vermiculture, okay, and, they, and you know about having a worm bin. So that compost goes into the worm bin, and the worms just devour it just like the chickens, and they will turn it into worm castings, which are gold. So I will show you worm castings. We have a sample of it out there. You can run your hands through, and you will see how different it is from, from compost. It, it's, it's just... And so what we do is we do um, worm castings for an inoculant or to supercharge our compost tea. That it, it really is a, a wonderful thing. So the worms are great. Now this is a compost tea brewer. This is the size that we haven't brewed yet while we've been here, but in California I brewed on this scale. This is just a 325-gallon tote. These are only $100. This system right now, the one that, the one that we did in California only cost us about $300. Now, you might say, well, that's a lot, but we had 250 fruit trees, and we had, you know, uh, thousands of feet of raspberries, and we had strawberries, and we had all these things. So, and, and you were, tr and the whole key to this is building. You just want to build and build and build and build. So this bang for the buck is a very, very, cost-effective way. Now, on that scale, you go this large. You don't know, need to go bigger. But because you can cut this um, in half, so it becomes 600, you can cut it into fourths, you know? It's, so it, 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 it's amazing what you can do with compost tea. So we're gonna show you how to brew with compo uh, have a compost tea brewer. And we do have a gift, so this all goes together. And this is very important because this is how you raise organisms. Our soils are so deficient in microorganisms, biological life. How many, how many of you have heard of um, uh, oh boy, uh, the microbiome, you know, your gut? Um, have, uh, 
how about um, probiotics? They're actually starting to, um, it's starting to be mainstream now, right? It was kind of out there for a while, but now it's starting to be mainstream. They know that our guts are being killed, our, our biology is being killed off. And I don't know, this is the danger of taking antibiotics so many times. And so you have to have a probiotic. Praise the Lord, this information's out there because a lot of people do not have the gut to, to be able to um, uptake nutrients. That's, and, and if we are built off of these fundamental blocks and you are not getting it, what are we doing? We're starving ourselves and we're becoming like that soil again. Now, that's not spiritually, but physically. Is it important to be physically healthy? How about to finish the work? Is it important? Now, it doesn't mean that God can't, if you're not, it doesn't mean that God can't do a work through you, right? We don't, we don't want to say that. But we do want to say to be, to be at the max. Remember, at the beginning, we said that the, we want to be firing on all cylinders. All eight cylinders need to be firing. And the eight laws of health are those cylinders. So it is very important nutritionally for us to get nutritionally dense food. Remember I mentioned in the previous, some of those, some of you that weren't here, 1940 to 2020, they did a study on the building, kind of like uh, the American diet. But the one that we would be concerned about was vegetables and fruit. But vegetables and fruit have deplete, de been depleted in nutritional value by 30 to 40% in those years, 30 to 40%. Now, if we were to say, um, I don't know about you, but if, if I was deprived, uh, I, I work, you know, and I need energy for the work that I do. Uh, if someone was to say, I'm gonna go ahead and take 30% of your energy, what, would I, how, how productive would I really be? So, so we have to eat 30 to 40% more now to, to get back to where we were in 1940, you know? So this is not sustainable. This, it's not gonna work. So what we have to do is start getting nutrient-dense food, and we have to get the biology to process that food so that we can uptake it and get, and, and get vitality, right? Energy, strength. Um, things that God wants us to have. So this is a very good, th th this is a very good way to build soil biology. In fact, it's probably the best way that, that I know of right now. There might be better ways, but um, there is a very simple way to do this. We're gonna show you in a five gallon bucket. And um, uh, it's a 24 hour brew. Your sources can be locally sourced. So I'm gonna show you out there, there are things that you, you, could, you could get, um, but you don't have to have those things. So what we did, I'll tell you a quick um, uh, story here. In California, we had a creek, and alders are a nitrogen fixer. So it's, it's like a giant clover, okay? Alders can get 30, 40, 50, 60 feet tall. We had this alder tree, and up about 30 feet, it fell over. And up about 30, 40 feet in this alder tree, there were worms in the crotch of that tree. Now, it fell over, and it, it had already started decomposing. Those worms were making, were, were up 30 feet. How did that worm get there? It's amazing, right? So he, they were going after this clover. It's, a, it's, a, you know, it's, a, it's amazing. It boggled my mind. But what I did was, this is just talking about sourcing materials. What I did was I took, that, took those worm castings that were in that tree and I made compost tea out of it because the biology in there is off the charts, right? So this is just a simple way. Now, another way, forest duff, this is the layer underneath the leaves in the forest. It is breaking down. Brush those leaves back, take the forest duff, right? Which is, is very close to soil. So you're gonna take that material and you'll put a few cups in your, in your tea bag. You can go to your, or, or, uh, to your compost pile, right? Uh, uh, composted compost. Get a cup of that. 
the, the reason why this is important is because we are trying to bring diversity back in to the soil. I, I think I mentioned before there was a study done um, and they said that, they, they saw that some of these soils have been so depleted, they have like 70 microbes, something like that, species of microbes. There's, they, they went up in three years, they, just by organic matter, I, I already said this, but this up to 3,000. And I think I mentioned earlier, oh, I, I think outside, but th this will boggle your mind. Um, a gram of good soil, right, can, can uh, there can be up to 100 million organisms in there. It's, it just boggles the mind. Now, biochar, the, the, well, that's, that's our next one, so I won't go there. But uh, this is a good way. Good way. So think about this one. If you do have a garden, think, think of go about going this direction. There is no doubt our soils are deficient in biological life. There's no doubt we are. We bring that back by putting it into the soil. It's very interesting. Uh, it's not a coincidence that God formed man out of the dust of the ground and he breathed ruach, the, he breathed the breath of life. We're talking about aeration and we're talking about nutrition and mineral dense. We are made up of minerals and biology. That's what we are. And so um, gases as well. But uh, so uh, we're gonna be going outside, but first we're gonna go, remember our first one, friend and foe? What did we learn about? Do you guys remember the name of the insect? A lacing, was it a friend or a foe? It was a friend, wasn't it? It didn't, didn't start out like that, though. But uh, so we're going to go to another one. This is kind of fun. And then we're going to go out, and I'm going to show you how to brew a compost tea batch. Now, I, I'm not, I'm not going to actually brew it, but I'm going to go through the process of it. It's a 24-hour brew is what you, what you want to do. I'll go into a little bit more about the timing and all those things. There's a little bit of variable, variability there but, and the actual things that we add are also, there's some room there. So that's why I won't do it up there, I want uh, uh, us out there. So, um, man, that looks hideous, doesn't it? I kind of like it, but, yeah. What is that? Does anybody know what that is? Uh, okay, good bug or bad bug? That sure looks bad to me. I'm not trying to sway you one way or the other, but. <laughs> okay, good. how many people think it's a good bug? Oh, let's see some hands. Let's say some good, good. Okay. How many people think it's a bad bug? It looks like it would just suck the juice right out of my watermelon. <laughs> okay, let's move forward. Good bug, bad bug now. Good bug. Take care of that. That beetle will do some damage to your plants, right? So he, this bug is amazing. That proboscis is so strong, he can stuff it right through a beetle shell. I have seen these bugs. I, never, I have not seen it till, till Missouri. There's, there's all kinds of subspecies and everything, but this is the one that, there's, there's others that are found, but we've seen this one in our garden. I saw this one last year with a Japanese beetle stabbed on the end of his proboscis there, which is pretty impressive, you know. I mean, it's sad. It's sad, <laughs> but Japanese beetles do some damage, so. Uh, but isn't that amazing? I mean, it really is amazing. Does God have some uh, police force? I mean, sometimes we don't think about how protected we are. Um, Satan wants to destroy us. He really does. He wants to destroy, absolutely destroy the food that we eat because he knows it destroys us. So. Praise the Lord for a police force. And this one does not look like it. It really doesn't. But um, they also will do any kind of caterpillar. We've actually done a caterpillar test. <laughs> but uh, it, will, it, will, it will take out a, a, um, a hornworm. So go ahead. That, sorry. <laughs> Somebody mentioned it. So I didn't, but this is an assassin bug, rightly named, right? They will assassinate those beetles. So, but uh, like I said, God is good. He, even in these situations, there's some hedges that he's put out there. The law of God is a hedge about us, 
right? There's a breach in that wall. We're to repair the, we are repairs of the breach. But we can be very, very grateful that God has put a hedge about us. The sad reality is we don't know what it is. And it's only by spiritual eyesight, spiritual discernment that we can understand that God does have our best interest at heart. And he has. Now, the sad thing is, is what happens in, in mono, uh, Big Agra is what do, what do we do to those bugs? They wipe them out because that beetle's there. Those same pesticides that kill that beetle will kill that bug. Why would we do that? We should not do that. That is not of God. I'm sorry to say, <laughs> that is not of God. God has a plan. That plan, we, we can know. We can know it. And this is just part of the plan. And I'm very grateful. That's why I like doing this one because this is endless. This study right here, if you want to do a neat nature walk or object lesson, you can go forever with your children in nature with just these. They are everywhere. They are endless. So praise the Lord for that. And uh, we'll go, let's step outside now and we're going to go through the compost tea brewing process and we're also going to talk about some of the other nutri nutrients. I know I did, but we'll go over it a little bit more because we'll be sourcing from that. All right, everybody's here. Okay, now you're sourcing for this. For this, now this is this is a very, very this is a small version of that larger tote. Now remember, those totes are a hundred bucks, right? This is five dollars. You know, so. Now remember, this can be cut, you know, cut. You can go and go and go and go with this. Um, I, I think that 300 gallon tote, I think I've cut four times before. So you, you take, uh, you, you, have a, you have a spray rig or if you're gonna, I actually built an uh, injection system where you, cause we had the orchard and I wanted it going straight into the root zone. So that was just a T bar not to go too much into this, but, um, and it went, it was a, a, a small pump, very low PSI, because you don't want to damage the organisms. So, and then you just pushed it in the soil and it injected um, the compost tea. Now I learned that from a landscaper in LA. He was, he was a um, million dollar homes, you know, palm trees everywhere and all that. But everybody was killing their lawn and they, did, they, you know, it was terrible. And he started a business, an organic um, landscaping business. And he started, uh, he started um, doing, in, doing these injection, injections. And he was, the trees that, that the people would say, oh, that's terrible. We have this live oak or, or palm tree or other, and they're dying because they're doing chemical fertilizers and there's no biology. So it's just, we're just keeping this thing alive, just keep, it's almost like they need a IV, right, of chemical fertilizers. So he, the peop, that's, that wasn't working, and the, peop, the people's landscaping was dying. And you know, this is multi-million dollar landscapes, right? And, and so what he did is he started a business, and these trees, they were dying, but he was bringing them back to life by bringing the biology back to the soil. The minerals are there, right? The tree just needs access to the minerals, but because of compacted soil and the death of the microorganism, microorganisms, because there's a symbiotic relationship between the organisms and the plant. That's very, very important to understand. Okay, so what this? So he started this, and the injection, the injection part was what I learned from him. Okay, okay, um, so it, it, the life was coming back, and he was shocked. He actually didn't think it was going to work at first. But so this is, this is basically um, just a small version of a compost tea brewer. brewer um, and this is what you can do at, at your home. Now, if you just have a lawn and you don't have a garden, do it. Just, just do it. You'll see. You'll see the benefits. And you can get away from any other kinds of things that are not necessarily healthy or that God wants you to use. So what it is is a five-gallon bucket. It's just a paint strainer, okay? This is your tea bag, how many, uh, you know, tea, herbal teas. Um, it's a paint strainer. You can get one gallon once. These are like, um, what, 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 for like two, they're like three, three something, and they last forever, okay? So now this is an air pump. 
And these air pumps are, are very cheap as well. Uh, I think they're well, air pumps are like $15 or something. And these are air stones. Um, it's very, so here's the critical part about this. Sourcing your materials is very important. Um, and also, this is an aerated tea, okay? This is aerobic, not anaerobic. A lot of people, it's okay, anaerobic teas are also okay, which means you just put organic matter and the biological life um, is going to develop, but it's not going to be a fungal dominated tea, which is, we have plenty of bacteria in our soils, which is good, but the ratio of one to one, right, and you can go a little bit lower, um, but is way off, like, like, I mean, we are at like zero compared to that 3,000, okay? That's where we are in our soils. So we have to get back to one-to-one -one fungal uh, 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 bacterial balance. Does that make sense? There, there's a harmony. God wants harmony, right? How about, in, how about in the church? Is there supposed to be unity and harmony? Most definitely. This is how we're going to get the job done. There must be harmony. So God... God has uh, lessons to learn. So what you're going to use, remember what I said about up in that tree and then sourcing all those materials? This is worm castings, right? That right there, if anybody wants to put their hand in it, right there is worm castings, okay? It, it is worm poop, so I don't know if you want to put your hand in it, but it's perfectly good. It's, you know, it's good stuff. So you're going to use... Um, about a cup of worm castings, right? And then it's just a compost. Now, this is a compost. You can buy compost, but that compost might be sitting for a long, long time. It, you know, um, if you buy it from, we've gotten compost from Hanson's in Springfield. That was a good compost. And so sourcing good compost is very important. Now. We already learned that you don't need to go and buy compost. You can find it right on your own land. So you go to that forest and you brush back those leaves. Grab a handful of that or a cup of that. Put that in a mix. Go to your compost pile. Go maybe source three to five th places on, the, on your property, okay? Or your yard. Um, you put that in, this, in the tea bag, okay? Um, and then you're going to put this air stone. This is a smaller air stone, but it's important to do that because really what you want to do is break this material up and aerate it. Get those, they reproduce. I mean, I think there's some microbes that reproduce every two seconds or something crazy. It's absolutely unbelievable. There'll be billions in here in no time. So it's important to take those steps and get the source the good material, right? It's, it's very important. Now, because we want to stay fungal rather than bacterial dominated, um, now you could stop right there, right? You could stop right there and you would be okay to do a brew. Um, but you can step it up, okay? Your fungally dominated soil, which is what we're shooting for, a fungally dominated tea, is going to feed on, this is, fi this is fish hydrolysate. Now fish emulsion is not the same thing. Get a very good quality. Now this will last you forever on this scale. It, it, it is, it's 35 bucks, but it will last you forever at this scale. So it's well worth it. Now this is going to feed you because of of um, the oils, that's one thing. The fish emulsion does not have the oils. They take things from it and resell it to you. And then they give you the, the this is fish remains, right? From, a, from a, 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 probably a fish processing. But it's very important to get um, uh, fish hydrolysate, okay? You can find this anywhere. You can find it online, no problem. Look at, here's a beneficial. Look at this little jumping spider. Yeah. So, and then this is liquid kelp. Um, this is going to have a lot of micronutrients in it, but it's also going to be a feeder for the, um, uh, it, it, it's amino acids basically. And that's what these are. 
and the fung fungally, fungally rich soils do not feed on simple sugars like, like your, your bacterias do. So that's why you want to put something, you don't have to again, you can just stick with this, but this is gonna feed it. And, um, and they're, they're gonna just really explode, you know, really be healthy and, and um, so that's that. Now, at the end, because it's not bad, remember we want that ratio, they, there will be bacteria in there, but they're not gonna be exploding. Bacterial will, will multiply way faster than fungal, uh, a fungus, right? Uh, or fungi. So what you want to do, it's okay, it's, it's okay to have bacteria, but you don't want it at the level because our soils already have that, right? And, and, and so, um, or they have some. <laughs> so what you want to do is, this is a simple sugar, this is just mal molasses. It can't be sulfur, full, it has to be unsulfurized, okay? And you will put, at the end of it, it's also a sticking agent. So if you are doing this as a foliar spray, because remember, your plants have a stomach in the ground, right? Um, and they also uptake from the leaf surface. This is uh, just a booming science field, right? There's a lot of, uh, your stomata is on the bottom, <laughs> on the bottom of the leaves, and there is uptake on the top and the bottom. Photosynthesis occurs, but they actually absorb nutrients in the leaf surface as well. Not only that, you want to, to, to stay away from fungal issues, which Missouri, we have plenty of them, right? Um, fruit trees will have a lot of fungus issues in, in this environment. We had it in California as well. But um, uh, you want to overwhelm that leaf surface with benefic the ones you want, okay? The microbes that you want. What, what has happened is when you have a fungal or, a, or not a fungal, a bacterial outbreak, like you see it manifested like in a rust or a blight, that's because the balance is way off, way off. So what you wanna do is bring that back into balance and fungal sprays are an excellent way to do that. Um, many plants, you can feed tomatoes, um, uh, you can feed tomatoes just kelp and uh, the magnesium they will uptake and you will see it, you will see it like that. So it's good. So what you'll do is you will put, uh, you know, cup of this, cup of that, uh, all, you know, source, source as many different places, like three to five would be good. Put it in the bag, put the aerated stone in the middle, and then uh, get something like this. This is, I like this. Uh, we couldn't find these, but this is, this is good. And you just lock the top of it so it doesn't, doesn't go over. Because if you put this in a, in a sprayer, you know, if, if this does come loose, let's just say this bag uh, comes loose, it will clog your sprayer, right? So it's, it's best to head that off. And then you're gonna brew for 24 hours. Now you can brew for 18, even 12, but the best is around 24. That's what most of the literature says. You can brew up to 48, but I, I would not do that. I would go ahead and go shoot for that 24. So, and you're also gonna want to apply it in the mornings or in the evenings, damp, because all these microorganisms move. They travel in liquid. They do not travel in, in compacted soil, right? There's no way for them to travel. So liquid is how microorganisms travel, okay? Move. So it's, it's even okay to put uh, mycorrhizal fungi if you have something like that into there. So you're gonna brew this and for 24, 24 hours, you're going to um, put it in a, put it in a, um, a uh, emitter. A sp you can do sprayer, you can do injections, or you can, you, can, you can do a watering can, which really works well. A watering can really works well. After you do the watering can, let's just say you have a row of, I don't know, cucumbers you're doing, right? And you're watering that in uh, with the watering can. Come back and water it a little bit deeper with your spray wand, okay? Just with regular water, it will drive it, drive it down. Okay, one thing about water, do not use chlorinated water. It will kill the microbes. So if you do live in the city and you have city water, aerate your water and the, and, and the chlorine will off gas 
and you'll be okay. Just do that. I think that I think probably like maybe four hours or something like that. Or even better, let, let it out for the night before and that it will off gas and the chlorine will not cure, kill the microbes. The best thing is, is really uh, rainwater or the, uh, not rainwater, sorry, um, just well water, the best water you can find. Don't worry about buying the water, <laughs> don't do that. But, but um, that's the best thing. So after that, you'll put just a spoon, a tablespoon of molasses into the mix and stir it round. Sorry, that was one step prior. And it is a good sticking agent, and it will also help the, help the uh, bacteria to feed. And then it's okay, because you're feeding the bacteria that's already there, but your fungus is dominant. You know, it's going to be a dominant um, brew, fungal-dominated brew. And so, they, um, so those are the ways that you can do it. You can inject it. Now, the one that I like to do, the, uh, that I think is a real good way to get the best bang for your buck, is especially if you're doing transplants, brew a compost tea batch, dunk your root mass, that is directly to the root zone and there's nothing better. Just like kind of, uh, just like I was saying, to the f surface of the leaf, that's really good. But there's nothing better than directly to the root zone because it's gonna uptake like immediately. And those microbes, they travel up and down the root and they, uh, they, they trade off. The, 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 the plant actually gives them sugars. And so the trade-off is I'll give you nutrients if you give me sugars, right? And so that's that symbiotic relationship. And the fungus are the highways in which they travel.